So I'm gonna get right to the point with this kit right here. The high grade Gundam Calabar to me is the best high grade witch from Mercury kit released. It's the last of the line and it is Gundarium tier. Now, this does not mean that this is absolutely and utterly perfect. Yes, it is absolutely and utterly perfect, but there are two little things that could have made this beyond perfect. They're kind of niggly, so I'm gonna leave these at the doorstep before I even get into the review. Number one, the permit looks absolutely amazing on this. The cool pearlescent shell units look amazing, but you do not have any red in here, which is what you see Caliburn with through the majority of its appearances in the series. Well, towards the end of the series, it's always in red. We don't get any red in here, and you know, I could forgive Bandai for this, except the fact that this would only be a couple of stickers. Eight stickers, eight stickers only, and we could have had that nice red permit. I mean, we've got black ones here for when the permit isn't even activated at all, so this just means Bandai's probably going to release a P-Bandai version of this with the red, like they released a P-Bandai version of Ariel with the blue. Number two, Bandai could have thrown at least one widespread open hand into the box with this kit. We got one with Gundam Schwartz set, so it's not a hard thing for them to do. That is just so they can sell multiples of this box right here, which is the Mira Soul Flight Unit. They want you to buy this over and over again for each of your Venatis mobile suits, your Gundams. This is the only thing that has the widespread open hands for Season 1 Aerial, Rubris, Aerial Rebuild, and the Caliburn right here. So once again, the lack of red permit and the lack of hands is just Bandai trying to sell more stuff, which kind of sucks. But regardless of that, this is Gundarium tier, perfect and awesome for what it is and my favorite high grade kid from Gundam The Witcher of Mercury. As usual, this video right here was sponsored by those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you do want one of these of your own, link will be down there in the description, as well as the pre-orders for the upcoming new Gundam series, Gundam Build Metaverse. So winding back in time a little bit to the build, and I'm going to admit I'm really going to miss these absolutely gorgeous Witch from Mercury boxes. That box art in that nice, pale, soft, almost washed out art has always been the packaging for ridiculously good kits for this entire line. Once again, I am super impressed by this kit. I assume because we've got multiple Venatis mobile suits before, being the Rubris, Aerial, Aerial Rebuild, that this would feel a little bit rehashed from them because it's such a similar design, but that is not the case. It does have a lot of similarities, but at the same time, it's very different in its own regard and I am super impressed. When it comes to the plastic inside of this box, we've got six runners in total. One multicolored, one gray, three white. We've got one in that absolutely beautiful clear smoky gray for the shell units. And speaking of shell units, we do have a nice pre-molded one in here with that cool pearlescent V-fin. Also included in here is a full runnerless stand, which means you do have a little action base in the box. And when it comes to the stickers, at first I thought these looked a little bit on the rough side, but once again, these are just the stickers for the permit and the, well, inside of the shell units, and some green ones for all over that broomstick rifle. None of them are really all that killer, but there are quite a few to attach during the build. The build is that exact same super impressive build we've seen throughout this line so far, especially with the Venatis Gundams. The feet are completely unique, they don't build up like any of the ones we've seen before, nicely jointed, simple but effective. The legs build up in the exact same way, we've got these C-clip knees. So about midway through this build I wanted to know exactly how much of this has an inner frame, it's something I forgot to do over the last while, and here is a little bit of an image of what it will look like. There are some aspects like the feet and the head, which of course would not have an inner frame, but there is no inner frame for the four arms either. But for the most part, this does have nearly a full inner frame. That is mega, super, awesome, impressive for a high grade kit. Building up the parts onto this is super impressive and some of the highlights for me would be the absolutely ridiculous head. The Schwartz head had me super impressed, this does too. Everything builds on with great color separation and layering, we do have fully color separated eyes, you have the choice of stickers or just let the green plastic come through. Same with the head cameras. And the one thing that really impressed me about this is this doesn't have your standard Gundam muzzle. I'm used to building Gumpla all of the time, so I'm used to just sticking a muzzle underneath the eyes, but that's not how this works. You actually insert the V-fin into the back of this full face mask section and it pops on at the end color separation out the arse. Now, we'll mention I did cut off the safety flags up on the V-Fin because I hate those things. I think they really do detract from a mobile suit. So I was worrying about this because you don't normally get these hard plastic clear V-Fins. 
So what I did is I snipped it with the god hand and then I finished it off using this file right here which is the Racer Pro by Gun Primer. This will not mark clear plastic. It will keep clear plastic fully clear when you use it to sand it down. So I highly recommend using this on any clear parts, including this V-Fin. Link in the description by the way. Like I mentioned, this all builds up absolutely perfectly. The stickers aren't too difficult. You just pop them on where they fit and then the shell units over again for a very awesome effect. These, what I can only describe as pearl rainbow style permits, don't really shine as bright as the red we would have seen before. They're very subtle and very, very nice. The V-Fin especially is super unique and super beautiful. The main aspects of this kit is very similar to that what we would have seen with Ariel, but it is a couple of aspects that really change this quite a bit. For example, we've got a cool butt flap, which is big and bulky and builds up in multiple moving pieces, and same with the backpack. It's quite large and looks pretty cool, but definitely one of the most unique aspects about the Caliburn is that broom long rifle. This has a lot of nice detail. Sadly, it is two long parts stuck together, so it does have a big seam line right down the middle, but besides that, it's got lots of detail. Towards the broomy end or the sweeping end of the broom, we've got these big opening segments and this does require a lot of attachment of stickers. And these can be a little bit difficult because they're very, very recessed. After a little while, you will get the hang of it. And overall, the build is a whole lot of fun. Now I did panel line this as well. I was gonna top coat it and put some decals on, but I didn't really have much time. And it's super humid right now, which would ruin the top coat. So let's move right on into the aesthetics. So jumping right on into the aesthetics, and I love this mobile suit, I absolutely adore it, it is so 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 cool. So what I wanted to do first is show you guys what this looks like before it's panel lined, so you'll see exactly what you get out of box with nothing extra done. And that's what it is right here, that this here, big broom, looking cool, this is awesome. So I did panel line it with the poor type panel liners which I always use, I just use grey all over it, there's so much to panel line on this, it is so so cool. And there is the before and after. On the left is what it will look like without panel lining, which does get a little bit washed out and you do lose a lot of the detail. So that is why I panel lined it, so there it is on the right, with just some grey panel lines to bring out all of that killer Caliburn detail. So anyway, there is the Caliburn fully complete in all of its glory. I have to admit, I am so, so impressed by this kit right here. First off, I would have thought that, you know, a predominantly white Gundam would look a little bit on the dull side once it's complete. And that kind of is the case a little bit if you don't panel line it. But once you do, the amount of detail on this is incredible. Matching with, of course, the Ariel and the Rubris we would have seen before. Once again, we do have all the hallmarks we would have seen through this line so far, especially with the Gundams. We've got the shell units all over the place looking great in that nice combination of clear part over popping foil sticker. And we do have a lot of the grey parts coming from underneath the armor. We've got those eyes in the chest. This time, no stickers for on those, they're just plain. But we do have a lot of aspects that makes the Caliburn the Caliburn and very unique. I love the feet on this. It really throws me back to some of the older Gundam Seed kits with the super long feet. And even though a lot of the design elements here are exactly the same as what we would have seen with the Rubris and the Ariel, they've all been kind of squared off. And weirdly enough, while building it, this does feel like a lot more of a masculine mobile suit than what we would have seen with the Ariel and Rubris. It's bigger up top, the overall shoulder width and upper body, well, width as well, just feels that much more masculine than what we would have seen before, which is perfect for the Calabarn. So now jumping into the full 360 degree spin so you can see all of the detail for yourself and see anything that I may have forgotten to mention. Now I will mention there are some aspects like mold lines and seam lines like you'll always get on these kits. There's some mold lines down on the heels, they're also on the sides of the knees, and they're all over other places as well. As for seam lines, the most noticeable one I noticed is in the butt flap armor, kind of where it snapped together, but we do have it in the thrusters on the backpack too. Nothing really killer, but they are definitely there and usually not so noticeable when it comes to white plastic. Also, I decided to pop off the backpack and the butt flap just so you can see what this looks like with those removed because this is a very aerial looking Gundam, just with a more, it's funny to say, traditional V-fin because it's just a two-point V-fin, unlike the multiple points we would have seen before, like Ariel with its V-fin and ears combo, Rebuild with its double V-fin. This one just has a single one, of course, just in a cool pearly rainbow. 
Finally then, speaking of Ariel, I decided to throw Ariel's backpack onto it because it just felt a little bit nude and I wanted it to look like a standard Gundam and that's exactly what it looks like. These kits are completely compatible with each other, so you can kit bash any of these Venatus mobile suits and make your own custom Venatus style or main style G Witch Gundam. Anyway, I better get this off. What? What was that? Did you hear that? It was like a whisper on the wind. It was like the sound of a bird on the wing. Like a salmon silently swimming through the cool river. Like the silver moon peeking through the clouds at night. From somewhere buried deep, deep in the earth. The bones of a Celtic ancestor and it whispers to me. Back, back, fashion show. Anyway, onto some size comparisons, and there it is side by side between two other Venatus Gundams, that of course being the Rubris on the left and the Ariel on the right. I'm definitely super impressed by how much they've changed these mobile suits while maintaining a really strong design core across the range. They look great, even down to their faces and V-fins. They're so different, but at the same time, so, so similar. But anyway, let's keep on going. There it is beside Gundam Aerial Rebuild, Gundam Schwarzet, Gundam Rubris Thorn, Gundam Rubris Ur, Gundam Faract, Gun Volva, Mikailis, Begir Beu, Begir Pente, Hindry, Hindry Sturm, Zord Heavy, Zord on Tikbalang, Guels Delanza, Delanza, Delanza Sol, Demi Trainer, Choo Choo's Demi Trainer, and the Demi Barding. So yes, I still can't find that Daryl Balde. Hopefully I'll find it in one of the next sorting through my collection and trying to get it sorted out video. It's in one of those boxes, so I will find it eventually. Hopefully. So now jumping into the accessories, and the High Grade Calibarn is a kit that comes fully loaded. Inside of this we've got that absolutely ridiculous and over the top broom rifle, 
We've got Ariel's Escutcheon, this time it's now in white. We've got a pair of Beam Sabres with blue blades. We've got an alternate V, Fin and Shell unit. These are plain. And finally, we do have an included Runnerless stand, which is always an awesome extra, especially when you've got a lot of heavy weaponry. So when it does come to the included hands, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, all we've got in here is the fists. So there is nothing besides these. This is definitely disappointing, but it is worth noting these are usable with the Mira Soul flight unit hands because they're the exact same entirely. As in the armor. It's the same armor on the back, so the hands will match. As for some other options, which do lead a little bit to a disappointment. First off, we do have a choice of V-Fin. We've got the standard one here, or we've got one in just this clear permitless one I'd almost say when it's not cracking off the energy. Swapping this out isn't the easiest but it's not too difficult either because the whole face has to be removed just like so including the forehead segment. It then involves making sure this is the right way around, pop it in underneath which looks like an incredibly cool mask and then that all yeah a little awkward. Anyway that right there is what it looks like attached so this is for obviously if you have all the permit parts in black, there is stickers included to do that. But also if you were a plucky enough builder, you could grab this segment right here too, which is just a bit of shell unit that is an option instead of this one. So underneath that there is a sticker. This one right here is a pre-molded part, but underneath it is a sticker too, so that you do have the option of that over it. Or if you were really, really feeling like getting creative, you could probably overpaint all the parts on this with a cool UV red paint. Pop this on instead, and then you've got yourself a cool UV reactive version of this with the red permit. But more than likely, this is so Bandai can release another version of this with a bunch of red stickers. That, and of course, for using in customs. Next up then in here, we've got a pair of beam sabers. These are very generic, super normal, don't do much. As for attaching these, it's the usual way. You just slide them into the holding hands like so. I'm just gonna test out regular grip and reverse grip just to make sure both work, and yes, they do. And there is a pose of the Caliburn using both of its beam sabers, looking awesome. And this is just a quick pose I threw it into, and this Gundam always looks cool from every angle. When these are not in use, you just pop out the beam as usual, and they can be stored around in the backpack like so. These attachment points don't move, they're fixed in position, but they look great. Next up then in here, we've got the Escutcheon. This is 100% physically identical to the one we saw with Ariel because it is technically taken or stolen from Ariel. Once again, this does everything it would have before. I can disassemble it, but not yet. Let's try it out as a shield first. So this attaches on in the exact same kind of way we would have seen before, right into a slot on the side of the arm and it holds on absolutely perfectly and looks pretty damn cool in that all white. There is meant to be some stickers though for on the end right here. This section is meant to be in white, but I left them off because I preferred it. And this is a sticker, it's not so bad because it, it's a, well, reflective-y, sensory type one. And also like we would have seen with the aerial, this can separate up into all of those gun bits. And the central aspect is a little bit of an adapter that needs to be put aside. This can be used in multiple ways, like it says, we saw the shield already, it can be used as individual gun bits like you're seeing in this image, but you do need sold separately action bases in which to use it. I do have those action bases, but I spent too much time in the backpack show that, <clears throat> gotta move on. And before I actually check out the bit on form of those particular bits, let's talk about this ridiculous weapon right here. Probably one of the highlights of the entire show. So what it says about the... So what it says about this in the manual is Varial Rod Rifle. A long portable firearm and the main weapon of the Calabarn. On its rear end sits a propulsion unit made of quadra thrusters, which can also be used to propel the Calabarn itself. So yeah, there are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is a Gundam broomstick, which is absolutely ridiculous. As for the moving parts we have on that, we have this around here, which is the arm for attaching it onto the backpack. It's got a lot of articulation. We've got two handles, that's this one here which pops out like so. It's a side handle, and we've got this one up here which pops out. A little difficult to get. Mm. Come on, and yeah, that one's a little bit on the difficult side to get out, but that right there is the upper handle. This does also have a thruster form, so these two all pop out just like so, and that bit extends. In the end there, we've got all of those stickers, which are giving a nice shiny effect to all of those thrusters. So on the whole, this is a pretty cool weapon. 
As for attaching the variable rod rifle onto the caliber barn, this is super simple. First off, I will mention there is only one attach point, this little guy here on the right hand side of the backpack. So that just means if you did have dreams of building a calibarn with two of these rifles, a big asymmetrical over the top double broomstick calibarn, well that will involve modifying this kit. You're going to have to add in an extra ball joint from another calibarn, which you'd have to get to get the second rifle anyway. Not a straight conversion without a doubt. Anyway, getting this attached down is super simple. Pop this onto that ball joint right there. And this is a rock solid design. I mean, it is rock solid. I was blown away just by how well this kit can hold onto this big old rifle. So all the joints in this are super smooth. They have a nice range of motion and it's really easy to get it where you need it. Popping it into the hand is super simple. I will mention this is really just window dressing right here. It doesn't actually hold onto the handle whatsoever. It's kind of just hovering in there. But on the whole, this just looks so good. And even though this thing is super heavy, the Calibarn has no issue holding this up. And I'm not even using those extendy heel parts. It just is so well balanced. I will also mention it's time to get this in the air. And we do have an included runnerless stand, but I'm not going to use that because I find it a little bit awkward to get poses in videos, but it is included. This is without a doubt an absolutely ridiculously cool weapon and it looks so unique. It's a broomstick. You can't actually get it between the legs in case you were wondering why it's still attached. You can just prop it up there if you want to, but it doesn't work that way. Everything here is quite fluid. I will mention these are attached on by double C-clips, so it is easy to kind of knock them off in the usual way that C-clips are. But if you're careful, you should be able to keep this moving and moving fine. I'll also mention that getting this into both hands is super simple because this just works so well. Like I'm reaching past a camera and a video recorder and a bunch of lights and everything and it's still so simple to do. Usually kits will fall apart, fall over, something on me when I'm trying to work them on camera like this but this one does not. It is absolute perfection and looks awesome all of the time in all of the poses. So getting these escutcheon bits attached on is pretty much exactly the same as what we would have seen with Gundam Aerial and Gundam Rebuild, with a little bit of Gundam Rubris thrown in on top of it. So we've got the ones that pop onto the shoulders, the ones that pop onto the sides of the arms, ones that go onto the hips, and really what makes this a little bit different is around back. We've got one butt flap attachment point, and the other two which would usually go on top of that with the aerials, that actually goes into these thrusters around back. They open up, it can pop them inside and close them on, to those parts in order for them to lock in and this has a very Gundam Rubris flavor. Very similar to Aerial Rebuild as well actually. And finally there is Gundam Calibarn with that bit on form and that variable rod rifle. What an absolutely ridiculous combination. We've got more bulk now in the Calibarn making it even look more powerful. That rod rifle is off the charts ridiculously cool and overall what we've got here is probably one of the coolest Gundam designs I have ever laid my eyes on. But how does it pose? Well, well you can see already it poses quite well. But let's get into the articulation. So finally now moving into the articulation and I've got the Caliburn right here stripped down basically to its elements. I'm actually going to pop off this as well because it does actually get in the way. This does spread out nicely just like so but it totally blocks the backwards movement of the legs and uh, I guess that's you know you could take that into consideration but hey. Anyway this thing is rock solid same plastic on plastic build we would have seen with all the kits so far and let's get it into the test pose. So throwing it into the usual test pose to test out all of the joints at once and this thing is a ridiculous posing machine. Like I mentioned there is that little bit of a blocky bit on the back if you have that bit attached but besides that this can pose up an absolute storm. There is a couple of little bits that are somewhat limited like the single joint elbow but for the most part this will destroy and demolish any pose that you put it in and it looks kick ass in every pose. But yeah, let's check everything out. We've got a double jointed giggity 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 goo neck. There's all the way up, all the way down. We've got side to side too. Perfect. We do have a joint right here in the upper body, which attaches on the shoulder that moves in and out. What attaches into that is a ball joint. So we've got the full rotation inside of it. Or should I say the wiggle around? We've got the full rotation too. The shoulder armor is somewhat independent to the arm. It is attached into the shoulder joint though. You're going to have to move this up if you want to get the full up out of the arm, which is that right there. We have full rotation at the upper arm. It is just a single point bend at the elbow, so that could be a little bit better, just be on 90 degrees. Standard ball joint wrist, so just the usual rotation and wiggle. Backpack thrusters are on ball joints, so they can rotate all the way around, and they can move in and out ever so slightly to give some nice flared out poses. 
We've got that beautiful barzam joint, so that means we get a nice crunch to the front and the front only. We don't get anything to the back, so just the front, but it also gives you a little bit of side to side ab crunch too, and we've got the full rotation right here at this joint. The side skirts are simple up down flaps, Simple front skirtings too, these come attached on the runner just up and down even though they are ball joint. Just a set hip joint so there is no drop. As for the upper leg swivel band I did go for the aerial as opposed to the rubris so it's a little limited. But it does have the rotation inside of it so if you were feeling creative you could just cut all the way around there and you'd get that full rotation if you wanted. The bend at the knee is a double bend like so, could be a little bit better but it's still quite impressive. Also inside of the knee does look very nice with that extra little piece of armour. The foot and the ankle very impressive, we've got this C-clip right here which allows it to pivot up and down. This piece of armour is on a ball joint so it moves a little bit. The toe is attached on via a ball joint which is a very nice and unique attachment. So this does rotate like so. And it can also come down like this. This is so nicely designed, so simple, but so effective. The heel is separate to that. This is just a peg in a hole, so it does not rotate as much. But we've got this very interesting aspect right here, which is a drop down heel segment. This is like the venting we saw on the aerial, but it drops down to give it a little bit more back support when it's standing. Awesome. So yeah, the Calabarn right here, another ridiculously poseable and rock solid witch from Mercury Kit. Even though it does have some limited elbows like what you're seeing right there, this will pull off even the most over the top poses and look fantastic while doing it. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and this to me, like I mentioned already, is a Gundarium tier kit. This is absolutely perfect. Pretty much everything about this is 11 out of 10. Like I mentioned, it would have been nice to have the red permit stickers, as well as some widespread open hands, but those really aren't that bad. I feel like we're going to be seeing a version with the red permit at some point, and the hands are available if you do want them. However, this does everything perfectly. Aesthetically, this looks incredible. This is the pinnacle of Venatus Gundam design right here in my opinion, and the use of pearlescent rainbow permit is ridiculously unique. The overall detail is stupendous, and this just looks so cool from every angle. When it comes to the accessories in here, what can I say? It's got a broom, a big semi-transforming variable broom. On top of that, it's got aerials of scutcheon, and beam sabers. It's got everything, except that extra pair of hands. Finally, then when it does come to the articulation, again, rock solid build. This is so much fun to build, and this can pull off pretty much every pose you could possibly want, and those expressive little backpack thruster wing segments make it look even more expressive on the ground and in the air. This is the perfect high-grade Gumpla, and if you're even just gonna get one high-grade ever, or one from the Witch from Mercury, this is the one that I recommend. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews. And as always, I will see you next time. Once again, this video right here, and none of these videos would be possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos. And special thanks to those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and here on the channel memberships, including... 10 Soldier YT, Caleb Engelhart, Dashil Marmion, Go Little Rockstar, Joe, Lawrence Seahack, Orgy59061, and Van Fawn.